four-door Honda Civic said to be stolen. Uh, we know, uh, we, we don't know uh, if there are any passengers inside this vehicle. We do know, obviously, just at least one person, uh, but it, it got risky uh, if, on those service streets, Stu, earlier when this driver was well above the speed limit, causing near crashes. But the good news is there weren't any crashes at this point. Crashes, no swapping of paint or anything at all. So that vehicle basically hasn't created any type of collisions. What we got to clarify real quick is that it did stay on the southbound five freeway. Our fuel situation, that's what we were talking about to the assignment desk, is pretty much okay for us right now. The issue is that TFR, the temporary flight restriction, that's going to be because of the Disneyland area. And we're forced to be able, forced to climb three mile ring from the center of the Disney Disneyland area, Disneyland area, and 3,500 feet above because of the clouds today, it, we, we cannot do that because it gets cloudier as we get higher and then we lose our, our ability to get reference points so it's unsafe to fly. Right now though, we're basically using the end of the lens, moving along slowly as this vehicle is continuing down the five freeway. At some point, uh, we're gonna try to maybe perhaps circumnavigate, get ahead of it somehow if the five, when the five pops out down south and keep an ear on where it goes. But we probably will be losing that shot uh, here as that vehicle keeps moving its way down the southbound the five freeway. We're gonna, to, we're gonna stay outside that ring now because we have to. And uh, I'm gonna talk with uh, Angie here in just a moment, but that's the suspect's vehicle right there. Uh, it's the one that's uh, coming up the, the darker one near all those other yeah. white vehicles and then the LAPD cruisers are still down there on the road as well but I need to talk to Angie we got to try to formulate a plan to stay with this as long as we can but it looks like it's going to be basically outside of our the outside of the Sky Fox lens so we're going to see what we can do maybe to intercept it as it makes its way out of the TFR on the other side. Okay, so I had mentioned uh, that TFR would be for the airport. That I'm mistaken by that, so thank you for uh, correcting that. And that is because of Disneyland and having to maneuver around the TFR and then the direction in which this pursuit is heady, headed, our lens might not just be able to capture this. But so our, our pilot up there, Angie, is doing her best. Kudos to the crew up there in Sky Fox. Of course, number one... Uh, uh, issue is to keep them safe and then to keep these drivers, these unsuspecting drivers safe on the uh, southbound five, the Santa Ana freeway this afternoon. Uh, it's past the one o'clock, uh, just struck one almost five minutes ago and we would typically be off the air and showing you Dr. Oz, but instead we're doing our best to stick with this uh, stolen vehicle pursuit. Uh, suspect now into the Orange County area that started in South LA, picked up by LAPD at 12.30 this afternoon. Okay, I wasn't sure. It's hard to navigate what we're seeing here. So it does look like the pursuit suspect, that stopped vehicle, that is our pursuit suspect. So that's really strange behavior. Just to stop right there on the five, now turning around, the making a U-turn, wrong way on the freeway, Stu. Southbound lanes on the shoulder. Looks like he's gonna be heading back northbound. Yeah. Now this is one of those situations where LAPD will not follow. This is like straight out not follow. Uh, in this case, that five freeway there's a lot of construction so this vehicle I think has a good portion of a safety uh, staying away from all that other traffic but you've just got to imagine what it's going to be like to be doing freeway speeds and then have a vehicle heading towards you on the freeway uh, this is basically almost I mean you, you just got to think about those other people uh, that are driving and you see other folks basically getting out of the way but you also got to think to yourself these vehicles now moving at about 100 miles an hour at each other if not faster anybody that's not paying attention out there on the uh, in the car Pool and whoop, sees he's swerving a little bit there. Oh Some of these gosh. folks, they just don't know. This is one of those ones where we don't want to see anybody lose their lives, especially not anybody. It doesn't make a difference, suspect or the or somebody just driving today. But you can see by the by our, our mapping also 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour northbound in the southbound lanes out here. Uh, the helicopter keeping an eye on it. California Highway Patrol made aware of it. And again, though, this driver taking some extreme risks this afternoon just to stay away from LAPD, stolen vehicle I mean what what is it worth it's not worth your life it's not worth injuring somebody else or taking somebody else's nope. life that's for sure some tense moments though as he's making our way actually closer to us in that carpool lane this afternoon and, and keep going to the right keep going to the right 
Oh, there he is. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yeah, he, he almost came to a stop. Maybe oh. somebody got really, really close to him. Or perhaps he's going to try to make another one of those U-turns that we saw him doing before or trying to get off that freeway. But again, though, very dangerous this afternoon and extremely high tension as this driver driving the wrong way this afternoon, northbound in the southbound lanes of the 5 freeway in the Orange County area. Just passing the Brookhurst exit. Again, if you know anybody who happens oh. to be traveling, oh my goodness, on the southbound front 5 with this dangerous driver out there heading northbound. So against traffic at speeds, uh, it's just, it's hard to watch, Stu. Yeah, as I was okay, saying, cool. let if you know anybody on the southbound five in this area right now, please alert them to uh, what they're up against with this reckless driver. Stolen pursuit suspect out of South L.A. in Orange County. It's a Honda Civic four door silver speeds above 60 miles per hour driving north in the southbound direction. Stu. Yeah, uh, Marla, I'm looking out the window uh, just at, at the traffic moving along that carpool lane. And this is, I got to say, the only plus, if there is any kind of plus in this, is it's one of those carpool lanes that has an emergency lane by the center divider. It's not that carpool lane right up the center divider. But you've got a lot of vehicles now as he's making some sort of, there's a transition here, and cars are not swerving, swerving. They can see it coming. Thank goodness everybody's being vigilant out there this afternoon. And he's making his way. It's basically getting to one of those one of those transitions where it's just the carpool lane transition so he's gonna be uh, maybe not maybe he's staying on the five is we'll see what he does here under the bridge okay so he didn't take that he's staying on the five and he continues to have a little bit of an emergency lane right there less traffic but a lot of uh, concrete gonna be blocking this vehicle here just for a moment or two again northbound five he's going about freeway speeds in the wrong direction on the freeway Whoa, oh somebody i think somebody just got into a little rear end accident down there now i'm gonna look Vinny, i'm gonna keep an eye on it i'm gonna keep an eye on it um he's continuing on northbound he's, he's gonna pop out of the bridge he's oh, i got i can't see it to the right go to the right go to the right go northbound on the freeway northbound on the freeway right there right there right there center of the screen uh, it, somebody just got into a minor, it looks like a minor accident down there when they slammed on the brakes to avoid this guy, and there was a little bit of a rear end. I don't think it was anything too dramatic. Maybe they just bumped. But right now, though, you can see that vehicle, and this is what we're talking about. At least you can see it now. There's a little bit of, a, of an emergency lane right there. This driver is choosing to take those chances. And look how close he's getting to a lot of these vehicles. Uh, this is just something I, I, terrifying. I, I'm not even sure I want to really watch as this continues on, but it definitely looks like he's slowing down once again. If he tries to pull one of those maneuvers here with a U-turn, these cars are going freeway speeds. I don't think he's going to be able to get off the freeway anywhere out here. So this is going to become very complicated and extremely dangerous uh, this afternoon. Okay, so now the location, according to Extreme Nav, is still uh, the southbound 5 right near the Magnolia Avenue exit. We're talking Anaheim, Santa Ana, Garden Grove, Buena Park, that area. Uh, I mentioned southbound, but the driver is driving northbound. So that's why we're saying this is extremely terrifying to watch. If you are just joining our coverage, this is the pursuit wrong way on the 5 freeway in Orange County right now. This has been know. the case for several minutes. And all of these really near misses of these unsuspecting drivers driving freeway speeds. And then we have uh, this pursuit suspect going against traffic. And there has been a, a pretty wide shoulder. So that has been sort of the saving grace. Nonetheless, uh, there was one just a couple minutes ago. There was one uh, small accident. Uh, it wasn't a serious accident uh, caused by this. That's according to Stu, who actually saw that happen. So we're hoping that those drivers were not injured. We're obviously very sorry what they're experiencing, though, having gotten into an accident because of this pursuit suspect. So southbound 5 with this driver driving north uh, in the speeds now just below 50 miles per hour it was much higher uh, not long ago nonetheless this is still very scary to watch because just those drivers going along on their friday afternoon and they have a driver coming at them uh, as Stu, uh, i haven't seen anything like this around. in a long time 
We, I, I've never seen a vehicle drive that long on the freeway in the wrong direction. And right now, it seems like he's coming to a stop. There's some discussion in the helicopter. Perhaps he has a problem with one of his tires. Mm. He has been driving a little bit slower. There's a California Highway Patrol vehicle down there that basically just missed this guy, meaning not as in, as in physically hitting him, but was looking for it. Just missed him. He's basically getting off the freeway to get back on. You can see he's in one of those spots where there's construction right now. He actually could, I'm looking at it, I, unless I'm seeing some problems down there, he actually could blend back in and make his way onto the northbound lanes doing what he's doing. So they're stopping traffic right there. You can see and that's going to be probably an LAPD officer. And again, that vehicle just not moving right now. Vinny, just take a look at the car. This will be our opportunity to see if he has a flat. And, and it looks like those tires are okay, but that vehicle stopped right now. Uh, again, facing wow. the wrong way, but there is an area where he can do construction. Uh, it, I mean, there, there's an area here with, with construction where he could basically blend back onto the northbound lanes. So uh, if he's trying to make a U-turn, I, I don't, I mean, this, we, I wouldn't have thought he would have made a U-turn to go against traffic. But right now, though, making some uh, unusual decisions out there, keeping an eye on what's going on. So what's and happening? Uh, again, some cars stopping oh. right now, basically, just to you know, basically say, "Hey, buddy, you're going the wrong way." Right. But uh, clearly, not knowing what's going on out here. But again, that vehicle just stopped right now. Uh, officers from LAPD are in that gore point. If uh, Vinny goes just a little bit wider and tilt up, there they are. So they are here. And again, with that kind of driving and what we've been seeing, if they have the opportunity, I would almost guess they would try to block this guy in or possibly do a pit maneuver just to stop this uh, the craziness. The, right. That's the only way I can put it. So there's about six cruisers there uh, sandwiched in between. It It, it, it is um, comforting, I will say, to see that traffic on the southbound slowing down just a little bit and the fact that our pursuit suspect has stopped for now. Obviously just trying to figure out what's next and knowing, looking in his or her rear view mirror and seeing all those black and white stew. So at this point, the strategy, it's hard to tell, hard to say uh, what LAPD is going to do at this point. Uh, Marla, that's the thing. It's like if they move in too quickly, this guy might try to dart, get into the traffic, and then create an accident. Uh, you know, don't know why he stopped. Uh, maybe he's just thinking about what's going on. It, it's a stolen vehicle. I mean, that's what we're hearing. It's just a straight stolen vehicle unless our assignment desk knows other information. And is it worth it? I mean, is this really all worth it? That driver possibly has some other warrants. Now with those, those guns drawn, they're out of their vehicles now. Yeah, they're not going to shoot this uh, suspect at all with that, all these vehicles driving by that area. They have the CHP coming around. They'll probably make that way a little bit more south and then turn, I mean, a little bit more north and then turn back around in that same area where that car could have joined the northbound freeway. Uh, right now, though, it looks like, the, the, I know for a fact, the northbound lanes, northbound lanes are stopped for the mm -hmm. police activity. Southbound lanes continuing to flow. They might be up. Here we go. At least the vehicle's moving. Oh. And again, putting himself in his kind of a, okay, so it looks like he's just going to back up and then rejoin the southbound 5 freeway. This would have been an opportunity for, and again, just armchair, don't want to say it like that, but the officers could have done something, maybe tried to block him in uh, or done something to, to stop this vehicle because he clearly is stopped right here. But again, we're in a helicopter watching. We see that big picture. Those officers, they've got something else going on. But again, Marla, a lot of armed officers right now uh, pointing their weapons at that vehicle, that wall, it's going to create a barrier so that car not a threat to them. But again, with as long as there's traffic moving, yeah, as long as there's traffic moving behind them, they're not going to open fire. There's, I, they won't do that. They would, they, with the chance of a bullet astray, astray hitting one of those other vehicles. Right it, now, it, it looks like he's just biding his time, Marla. I, for a moment there, it looked like I, I know we were s speculating that a, a tire might be damaged. Nope. It, no, not at all, huh? No, we, 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 yeah, we've been looking at all four of those okay. tires. All the tires seem solid, <laughs> and. Well, and, the, uh, the backup, by the way, the backup northbound five. Is, 
And northbound five, about a mile worth of backup right now, completely oh. stopped as it stands. Southbound five, I'm looking out the window, there is a California Highway Patrol blocking traffic, so there'll be less traffic here in just a moment, giving those officers an opportunity to maybe come around or get, get around that vehicle or block it in. But those tires still moving right there, you know, the steering wheel, don't know, maybe he's got some mechanical issues, maybe he ran out of gas. I don't have my crystal ball this afternoon, but I can tell you this is a very tense moment as that vehicle basically in some sort of standoff with officers. Yeah. But in that same in that same sentence, there's a concrete wall that separates those officers and that vehicle. All right, so we do have a standoff seemingly on the 5 freeway in uh, the Garden Grove, Buena Park area, oh. Orange County. What, Stu? Uh, and Marla, we're just getting some more updates from the PD helicopter uh, down below. That's what I was kind of trying to figure out why they were so aggressive with this one vehicle. They were calling it straight stolen. Now, oh. now they're saying that this is a carjacking suspect. Okay. Now they're not saying. I haven't heard the words armed carjacking suspect, but a carjacking even by force is it changes it up a little bit, makes this uh, driver a little bit more dangerous. So that might be one of the reasons why they didn't give this thing up earlier. Right now, though, you can see that that vehicle stopped. Uh, the southbound lanes completely stopped. Northbound lanes completely stopped. Car moving slowly. Uh, but again, we saw him earlier on. It appeared that he was waiting for those officers to re-engage the pursuit. So maybe there's, you know, maybe it's more of a game of cat and mouse with that driver. Right now, though, LAPD, they've got their weapons out. There's that wall right there. Uh, and there's very little, unless that driver is armed and has a weapon, there's very little that uh, that car could do to threaten those officers. But all the lanes now, northbound and southbound, are completely stopped as it seems to be a little bit of a standoff, that vehicle moving a little bit, then stopping. I wonder if they might be out of gas. Yeah, very well could be the situation. Uh, the, the, the pursuit started almost an hour ago. Now, as you just heard Stu say, this has now been deemed a carjacking suspect all along. We were saying a stolen uh, vehicle pursuit suspect, a carjacking suspect, as Stu's being told now by uh, officials down there. You see construction right here in the middle. Uh, this is the, the five that is shut down near Artesia Boulevard. So both directions currently shut down. The standoff, you can say, is underway. More and more black and whites are showing up. CHP's involved. LAPD officers are involved. Although this is in Orange County officially now, LAPD did pick up their pursuit uh, in South LA. And now here we are with this standoff on the five free freeway in Orange County, Stu. And for a moment there, you're seeing I thought like the vehicle move a couple of feet and then just stop that's why y you mentioned maybe this car has mechanical issues it's a Honda Civic a four-door silver tinted windows uh, but we just don't know we don't know if if the pursuit suspect no, is no. armed we really don't know if there are passengers in this vehicle as well uh, we do know the LAPD they are now out of their cruisers their guns drawn and the standoff continues Stu. That's right, Marlon. You know, you see that vehicle backing up now. It, it really, I just, I, I, again, who knows? You know, we're just watching right now, moving very, very slowly, reversing. And it, it was one of those, don't really know what, I'm sure this guy doesn't even have a plan. You've got a wide open freeway here northbound, I mean southbound, and it looks like he's going to be, oh. here we go. Here we go. Uh, continuing on very slowly. But again, though, Something's this is one of those wrong. things where it, it, it almost seems like he's, doing this cat and mouse thing. He's like waiting for those officers to get back into their vehicles and basically chase this guy. I mean, you can just get a little wider just to see what those officers are doing. Yep, they're getting back into their vehicles. And let's see when they make that turn and they get behind him, let's see what that what, what mm. the suspect does. And if he does take off, that means that really, truly, he's just waiting for these guys to chase him. Uh, right now, though, they, yeah, this is a really good time where they could do a pit maneuver, yes. maybe try to box him in. But again, though, we don't have all that information. We did get that update, carjacking. I'd like to find out if it's a armed carjacking. But, uh, and if it is, that might be one of the reasons why these officers are so standoffish. They're not doing that pit maneuver because if that suspect is reported to be armed, well, then he's got a gun, and that changes up everything. They, you know, they spin him around or they pit him in there. It's going to be a situation 
situation where that uh, that suspect has a weapon could point it at the officers and they don't want to do that so right now we're finding out if, if we can get any in for more information about what type of carjacking this was okay we'll let you gather that information you can see that the LAPD officers okay. have repositioned themselves so they're now on the southbound 5 freeway the suspect himself or herself moving along slowly now that right. uh, both directions have been completely shut down this driver has all lanes to themselves <clears throat> it's still interesting given the fact that they're creeping along Stu Yes, definitely. And, and we're hearing a little bit more information. We have to get it confirmed, of course, but we're passing along what we're hearing. Uh, weapon. That's the best they can do right now. Weapon. Don't, unclear if it was a knife or a, or a gun, but definitely a weapon. Also, that suspect making gestures uh, towards the officers. Uh, and again, those gestures are possibly possibly suicidal oh, you can see him waving seeing, a hand yep. out there i can't see if the if that if he's got something in his hand but uh, definitely there's uh, some issues going well clearly if you're going to carjack a vehicle chances are you have some issues here oh, we go here we go and oh just almost almost but at these speeds they're going to keep trying and with what's been going on i i believe that they're really going to make an aggressive attempt to bring this to an end even if the speeds get a little bit higher clearly there are no other vehicles here on the freeway so that's going to make it a little easier for the lapd but a valiant attempt right there now it looks like this is uh we're going to be getting off an off-ramp which is sad because that's going to put us back in with the mix, in, mixed in with the public uh, but we've seen him slow down before as he makes that turn possibly another pit maneuver coming up here very shortly okay uh, any word on what exit this is I mean this might be Artesia that's the closest Beach Boulevard. exit Beach Boulevard. Oh, Beach Boulevard okay Beach Boulevard. Beach Boulevard all right so now we're at this busy intersection uh, we saw the first attempt of, at a pit oh, maneuver the officer did make contact but it yep. ultimately did not succeed uh, because here we are this pursuit continues so what we've learned is oh here we go another, we pit, another pit maneuver pit, another pit there. another pit whoa that was a that was a hard one right there and that vehicle's still moving officers these are going to be some sheriff's department down there and LAPD all working together they're going to kind of yep, definitely lock him in but he's got that opportunity oh. to back up and we've seen that in the past so not sure if they got that vehicle that actually did the pit coming back maybe possibly to block him in look there he goes he's starting to back up and that's going to be an issue but LAPD definitely wants to bring this thing to an end getting a little aggressive now and again that driver continues to just elude that going into custody now just backing up uh, again <laughs> I never I never want to definitely on Beach Boulevard and right by the and now that he's got that opportunity to turn it around and keep it going but again here we go again and now we're in with traffic once again and we're in the Orange County uh, sorry the Buena Park area but definitely in Orange County moving slowly uh, as officers get back in their vehicles and then hopefully they'll try to do another one of these pit maneuvers here once again just bring this thing to an end get that guy into custody before somebody really gets hurt all right so two attempts at a pit maneuver two unsuccessful attempts at a pit maneuver uh, as you pointed out Stu LAPD is getting a little bit more aggressive now that we're back to surface streets this is uh, as our extreme nav technology shows us Anaheim Santa Ana Garden Grove Buena Park area 10th Street and Western Avenue uh, it says stolen car pursuit right there on your screen we have since learned that this is officially a carjacking suspect we understand that there is a weapon inside the vehicle we don't know what that means if it's a knife or if it's a handgun uh, we just learned this information we're working to get this confirmed it's a Honda Civic this all started in South LA nearing one hour ago when LAPD picked this up uh, there was a standoff on the 5 freeway for about 10 minutes or so uh, near Artesia Boulevard, not far from Beach Boulevard, where we just came from. We're on Western Avenue now. Uh, the pursuit continues. We were thinking that the vehicle might have some damage. Certainly, it's going to have some uh, body damage now, given those two uh, bumps from uh, LAPD officers. And th those are LAPD officers, right, Stu? Meaning CHP? I, I'm sorry. That, that, uh, we're uh, looking at black uh, and whites from LAPD, or is that CHP? 
That's going to be that's going to be LAPD okay. down there. The first vehicles in in line. I'm sorry, I was uh, no, listening okay. to listening to the the, the the broadcast, trying to find out any more information we could about it. Uh, you know, the, the pursuit continues on out here. That vehicle moving very very slowly. A lot of traffic down there. That actually might be a plus. We've seen that in the past where basically he'll just get blocked in by traffic. Uh, right now though, it looks like the the light just turned green, so he's going to be making that late. Oh no, he's going keeping keeping on straight. Uh, LAPD clearly clearly authorized to do a pit maneuver. Perhaps they'll try to do it again. Uh, that not blocking him in, you know what? I, I'm the guy in the helicopter. I'm definitely not a law enforcement officer. They probably had their reasons they, and, and why they did not do that. But uh, right now, very slow speeds. And it kind of makes you wonder, too, why we're going so slow. If it has something to do with that vehicle or perhaps, uh, you know, it, it's, it might just be that driver. But if it is that vehicle, why are they driving slower? Is it something mechanical that might help bring this to an end? But again, though, it's just a very lethargic chase right now as we're in the uh, Buena Park area. Looks like we're getting back into a very residential neighborhood, uh, just making blocks. It seems like we said it in the past. He just, whatever opportunity he has available, like if there would have been something blocking him, he probably would have made a turn. But uh, LAPD, back to keeping a little bit of distance. There's many opportunities where they could have tried to pit him once again. But right now, this little Honda Civic that is described as a tw uh, 2014. Uh, still moving along very, very slowly out here. And these officers, I, I, can, I can imagine their frustration right now. They probably, as much as many of the viewers, just want to bring this to an end. Yes, uh, given how dangerous this uh, suspect is, driving against traffic at freeway speeds on the 5 freeway, that was uh, one of the most <clears throat> intense pursuits I've ever covered. Uh, and I, I've been covering these in Los Angeles for almost 10 years, and that was difficult to watch. Fortunately, no injuries from that. There was an accident caused by that. We think that happened because of, uh, oh, it looks like, I'm just going to change my train of thought now, as it looks like LAPD officers are getting a little bit closer again. So the, those speeds uh, now above the 35 mile per hour threshold. If it's under 35 mile per hour, 35 miles per hour, Stu, that's when yep. officers can make that pit maneuver. Um, we haven't talked about spike strips uh, either. That's another option, uh, especially if the roadway is clear like it is here on Beach Boulevard in Buena Park. That's right, but you know they, they have to coordinate all that all that type of yeah. information, and perhaps they are working with uh, the Buena Park uh, law enforcement, or or they might be able to get one of their own vehicles out ahead of it. But right now, though, these slow speeds and then the you know the the ability for this driver just to change lanes constantly is not making blocks to get a vehicle in front to, to deploy those spike strips. That would be very difficult. Right now, though, looks like a, a green light for the uh, suspect, which works out for everybody down. There. There. But again, very slow speeds. And Marla, you're right. These are the types of speeds where that officer could make his way up there safely and do that pit maneuver. Maybe it's going to happen right, right now. Right here. And, and yeah, but it <sighs> seems like when he gets a little closer, now you see that the cat's out of the bag. That's probably my third cat reference today. But the cat's out of the bag right there, and you know he can't. You can't just kind of sneak up on him. That suspect probably knowing when that LAPD cruiser gets closer, they're going to try to pit him. So he's going to speed up every time. Now, again, we've heard in the past that there's a, a window or an envelope of speeds where they can do it safely. In some cases, that envelope might stretch a little bit, especially when it's a suspect like this, and they just want to bring this to a stop. All right, so we remain on Beach Boulevard in uh, Buena Park. Speeds uh, not terribly high. We saw speeds, by the way, if you're just joining us, we saw speeds earlier 90 to 100 miles per hour on surface streets. Uh, this started... Uh, now, one hour ago in South LA, it's made its way to Orange County. Uh, it's been on the 10 freeway, the 5 freeway. There was a brief standoff on the 5 freeway. Traffic, I'm sure, is still trying to recover from being shut down in both directions at Artesia Boulevard. Uh, now we're here in Buena Park. We also saw this carjacking suspect in this Honda Civic drive uh, at 60 miles per hour, 65 miles per hour, the wrong way on the 5 freeway, so against traffic with several near misses. 
Early on, we saw a near collision head-on between the suspect and a big rig. Uh, we've had two attempted pit maneuvers by LAPD. Uh, those clearly weren't successful because the pursuit continues. And now we're seeing those uh, black and whites get a little bit closer. Speeds, though, too fast for a pit maneuver since they are above 60 miles per hour. So we just crossed over Hawks Point Drive. Uh, it says now we are moving to the Whittier area. Uh, our extreme nav, nav technology helps out in terms of city to city if we're going to stay on these surface streets. It, it's uh, at this rate, we've covered quite, quite a few miles, uh, Stu. Uh, we're still making our way here on the uh, on Beach Boulevard South. It says South Beach Boulevard, but we're clearly going in a northbound uh, direction. That vehicle driving so slowly is actually adding to the safety factor of what's going on here until he makes a left turn right there illegally in front of everybody else. But what was going on right there was because of the fact that he was driving so slowly, the traffic was moving farther ahead of him. Now we're making our way southbound on Beach once again. Speed's picking up just a little bit. LAPD, they're right there behind him. They, you know, time definitely on their side as long as this vehicle continues to drive at regular speeds and there isn't that much danger to the public but when he starts driving a little bit quicker starts running those red lights clearly the longer he's doing it the more dangerous it becomes and the odds become higher that somebody might get hurt right now though these officers very very disciplined in the fact that they are basically just staying right behind them right there, not taking every attempt to pit that vehicle or bring it, you know, bring it to an end aggressively as uh, this suspect continues to lead officers in this chase out here in the, uh, as we're leaving the Whittier area and getting back into the, the Buena Park Garden Grove, I'm sorry, Fullerton area, uh, you know, this vehicle just continues to elude these officers. Right now, though, not a lot of traffic on their southbound lanes on the beach. There are some uh, major intersections and again folks they probably are not even really sure what's going on I'm, I know that those officers have lights and sirens that'll help alert the public there you go you have a solid red light down there in the in the in the cross traffic just got a green so we'll see what goes on as that vehicle has pretty much we never has to stop but this time has stopped right there and again just you know there he goes basically just kind of waited for a moment or two and basically ran that red light a number of officers behind him and we're continuing now southbound on Beach Boulevard making our way back over towards the 5 freeway hopefully he doesn't get back on that freeway that's something I, I don't think I could watch again as you were saying Marla driving the wrong way uh, that was nail-biting to say the least yes uh, and yeah it is nice that it's uh, this calmer situation okay. oh do we have was that just an officer who sped by? No. Yep. The, so we don't know if that vehicle right there is going to... Oh, see, that's the thing, too. That, that suspect saw what was going on. Oh. Uh, but there you go. It, it didn't take that opportunity, but saw what was going on. We've talked about the, uh, the, <clears throat> the spike strips. Right. We've talked about you know the pit maneuver. That vehicle, that LAPD vehicle, moving way ahead of him. But this is a really large street, Marla. Take a look at this. I mean, how many lanes are down there? I'm being serious. I can't really tell because of the glare on the monitor. Uh, so, and again, there he goes made another u-turn so there you go this guy clearly aware of what's going on around him clearly aware right. that these officers might be trying to put those spike strips out and that's probably what we just saw right there yeah that, makes uh, that sense. vehicle yeah making this turn now going back that same direction speeds man yeah, they're about what you'd be driving on this road at any rate but there's so many folks out here right now and you know are they going to be able to shut down the road, get the civilians off the road? It would be it would be a, a, a mon <laughs> it would be a real task for them to do something like that. But right now, this car continues just making his way out here. We've seen a couple of those U-turns. Maybe he'll do it again. But uh, officers from LAPD, they're tasked with that difficulty. It's like, how do they stop this vehicle safely and uh, bring this thing to an end? It doesn't look like this Honda Civic. Uh, has significant auto body damage, uh, does it, from those two pit maneuvers? No, it's hard to tell. It doesn't look like that. It, it, yeah, we've seen them in the past where they'll lose a rear bumper or something right. like that. In this case, it seems like it might be some, probably just some body work on, the, on those quarter panels, making that turn right there. So, And you can see some of that damage. It definitely has some damage right there. But but not, not enough uh, to create any kind of issue. Hopefully, I was kind of hoping that maybe when they hit him, it would damage the tire. Maybe he would be losing a wheel. That would probably bring it to an end as well. Right now, though, you can see we made our way onto, I believe this is Rosecrans. Here we go. Here we go. It looks like there's that other, another opportunity. 
but uh, the speeds, well, that suspect, he saw it coming. And now the speeds have increased once again. So uh, definitely this guy's learning what's going on around him. At least he's being aw he's aware that these officers are really trying to bring this to an end. Yes. But uh, right now, they're just following lights and sirens as we make our way uh, back toward, in the Buena Park area. But it looks like we are heading roughly uh, eastbound, but we're could be heading back into the Whittier area. There's the LAPD airship, if you guys were wondering. It, you know, and this, and that, uh, those folks in that uh, airship been uh, very calm, uh, calling this pursuit out this afternoon and keeping track of it and keeping track of their officers as well, getting them in position and giving them ideas to how they can bring this to an end. All right, so we're on Rosecrans Avenue for uh, those viewers who may just be tuning in and you thought you were going to see Dr. Oz. Uh, we are bringing you and we've been bringing this to you since about 1245 this afternoon. Uh, it is a carjacking suspect from That's South awesome. L.A. That's where this all started about 1230. Uh, so it's been underway for just over an hour now. This carjacking suspect leading LAPD officers into Orange County. This is on surface streets in the Buena Park area, uh, going through another intersection. And uh, we've seen two attempted pit maneuvers. Uh, they were unsuccessful. Uh, we saw a standoff on the 5 freeway at, oh, oh making a U-turn right there. Yeah, another U-turn right there, making his way back through that same intersection. Uh, again, though, th those officers from LAPD, probably a little frustrated. They are humans just like you and I. And you can see that one making his way right now. Yeah. But again, every time they get close enough, that suspect really just opens it up and creates that, uh, that gap and also gets those speeds up to where it becomes unsafe for that pit maneuver. Uh, going right underneath Sky Fox right there. Vinny doing an amazing job keeping it on the camera. Angie just uh, basically holding us right here as that vehicle drives underneath us. Uh, the LAPD airship much lower and uh, they're able to uh, stay with it and they've basically just been tracking it the entire time. Now the speed's picking up again so it shows you that that vehicle just fine. All that suspicion about possibly a mechanical issue Probably not. Just that driver, just uh, just being, you know, just keeping the officers that far away from them that they can't take them into custody. Hopefully, in the end, it's just going to be one of those he pulls over or the vehicle runs out of gas or whatever it may be, and nobody is hurt. But eventually, that suspect going into custody. And we are hearing, uh, I'm not sure if we got that confirmed yet, Stu, that this suspect is, in fact, armed. Well, they is armed, but the, what he is armed with, that is the question. Uh, the uh, LAPD airship basically gave us that information earlier on saying they, it is an armed carjacking, but we don't know if it was a knife that that person used or if it was a, a gun, but definitely a weapon involved, and that might be one of the reasons why, in the beginning, they were a little bit less uh, aggressive on those pit maneuvers. They clearly, whatever it was, they have the information down there on the ground that whatever that weapon was, they feel safe enough where they'll be able to pit it and have that suspect facing them. Uh, right now, though, another hard turn, putting himself oh. into traffic. So it, it just gets more and more confusing on what this guy is doing. Kind of stopped right there behind the tree. Uh, don't know if he's blocked in or what's going on. Yeah, it was blocked in. Uh, and again, making his way on an emergency lane right there, making his way basically just making big turn big big u-turns changed his mind this time didn't take the street he took last time but staying on beach so he just went through rosecrans uh right now though you would just keep an eye on it and lapd they're pretty much doing the same thing okay so we're back on beach boulevard now in la Mirada. speeds under 40 miles per hour still too quick for uh, another pit maneuver attempt uh Stu, i'm going to ask you uh just from our assignment desk um getting word that this is a gta suspect a grand theft auto suspect uh, what is that is, is that ex is the same thing as a carjacking suspect no a grand theft would be uh, would be just a, like the vehicle was stolen that was the original call okay that was the original call that was what what started all this was a grand theft auto meaning a straight stolen uh, you know that means you know if somebody came out and their car was gone they moved they bumped that up in, in as far as uh, the type that you have somebody else trying to do a pit maneuver right there folks on the ground you know oh, no. we, we never want to see any yeah we never want to see anything like no. this we've seen some interesting things like this in the past uh, but you know LAPD they don't 
they don't want to see any of this stuff. They don't want any kind of help. And it's My not goodness. because of pride or anything weird like that. They don't want it because they don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, unless that driver is a law enforcement officer, uh, you know, the chances are that, that, that uh, you know, he is not trained, or she is not trained on how to bring this to an end safely. But again, that vehicle right there really just kind of uh, keeping up with that suspect and now maybe just, you know, figured I, I gave it my best shot, I'm out of here. Uh, LAPD, there we go, another U-turn. And that guy wanted to get away from that, that civilian more than he <laughs> seems just as badly as he wants to get away from these officers. Another U-turn right there, a lot of these folks getting out of the way, so you know there's lights and sirens on down there. But again, what we were talking about, uh, the GTA, that Grand Theft Auto, that was the original call on okay. this. They bumped that up. Sorry to confuse the it's situation. Severity. Yes, okay, yeah, so and, we're dealing with an armed carjacking suspect. Uh, this, this driver making right. U-turns on you. Beach Boulevard. Uh, at this point, going back and forth, doing everything right. that he or she can to stay out of custody. Uh, we, we've seen a standoff on the 5 freeway in Buena Park at Artesia Boulevard. Now we're seeing speeds pick back up uh, to 70 plus miles per hour. Uh, we've seen a, a couple of attempted pit maneuvers. We saw LAPD trying to coordinate a spike strip situation. A lot of traffic coming up. A lot of traffic. All right, Stu, so you're saying I'm, there is a lot of traffic I'm, coming I'm, up. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that, Marla. It wasn't, oh, no, that please. really wasn't for you or for the viewers. Uh, yeah, there, I was just kind of giving everybody a heads up. There's a lot of traffic now on Beach Boulevard, probably because of all this activity. Uh, I'm even looking. It looks like he's going to be able to make his move there in that lane that you see, but that becomes blocked as well. So it is going to become really, really tight right there. And it, when when that light goes green, which probably isn't going to happen for a moment or two, uh, he, he might be able to get on the go again. But officers, they're going to be very cautious about getting out of their vehicles and approaching that uh, that car especially with civilians around they don't want to see anybody get hurt there we go that was i was saying how that lane was blocked looks like he's uh, basically getting spike strip there you go right in oh, front of him right there. and how are you going to get around that oh, oh. that's not going to be good there you go and, and he did <laughs> so that's how he's going to get around that. We all saw it. But it was a good attempt there by these officers to uh, try to bring this to an end. But again, though, you can see they are using tactics that are less aggressive uh, trying to bring this to an end. But the suspect just continues to drive. Officers continue to chase him. And Sky Fox continues to watch. But we might be uh, getting to the point where we're going to have to go get fuel here shortly. Yeah, we've been with this, uh, Stu, for an hour officially with you because it's coming up on the quarter hour here in the one o'clock hour. Dr. Oz is typically on, but instead we're, we've been following this carjacking suspect into Orange County from South LA. Uh, we've seen our first attempt at a spike strip and the suspect outsmarting that uh, attempt, moving, driving literally around those spike strips has its wide open street now on Beach Boulevard. Uh, again, this is the Garden Grove uh, area, Buena Park, pardon me. Oh no, we are back in that area where it's sort of mixed. Yep. Uh, and plenty of LAPD officers behind him, two attempted pit maneuvers. And still the suspect is managing to stay out of custody, Boy, but right really, on. Stu, it's only a matter of time. Well, it, most of the time it is just a matter of time, and especially with what's been going on and the, the fact that he put so many people in danger there on the 5 freeway this afternoon. LAPD is going to stay with this for quite some time. Uh, you know, I'm sure Orange County, uh, in, in this area, the, whatever the law enforcement bureau that handles this particular part of uh, Garden Grove or the Buena Park area, they've got to know this is going on in their neighborhood. Uh, the fact that they're not joining in is probably a, more of a coordination issue than anything else. Uh, you can see that vehicle now. It looks like we are moving uh, off of the, the bigger streets back onto Alondra. Uh, and again, a long straightaway. There is nothing, I'm telling you, there are no cars after that one. There are no cars on the roadway for quite some distance. So this would be the spot where they would have a good opportunity to do another pit maneuver. But again, if the speeds get too high, with all those eyes on that officer, all those judging eyes on that officer, uh, they might not do it, or they might. Another, but you can pit. see right there, yeah, but at 60 miles an hour, yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. But there are no other cars, and they are making their way up to another major up there where there are cars. But there was that long section right there with no vehicles around. And again, you know, 
that officer, they don't want to injure themselves, they don't want to injure their partner. And again, I've said it in the past, and it is the honest truth, they don't want to hurt, even injure that suspect. They just want to bring this to an end safely and get that uh, suspect into custody. Right now, though, we're continuing to move along out here. And again, we got it to another spot. There's plenty of cars out there, so it's going to be a, a, a da more dangerous spot if they try to do a pit, pit maneuver out here right now. Okay, officially La Mirada, Alondra Boulevard uh, speeds right now where they could do a pit maneuver, but given the traffic on either side, they can't. But as soon as they get that open road, it looks like they're going to be aggressive enough to try for another pit maneuver. And yeah. the suspect can feel it. The suspect knows. Yeah, you know, Marla, I mean, we've been watching this for some quite some time, and you just got to kind of wonder, you know, those uh, those explorers, they are weighed down. There's a lot of weight inside those vehicles, mm -hmm. but they are just V6s. And then you've got that little Honda Civic. Uh, you know, it is a four-door. You know, I don't know what it has done to it, but those are little four-cylinders. It's amazing that they can be able to just kind of scoot out of the way of the officers. We've been watching this constantly, and it, it again, it just shows you, like, when they're requisitioning vehicles, you know, they, they don't look for those, you know, fast or powerful. You know, LAPD, they want reliable, and they want, uh, and that's it, basically, just a very reliable vehicle that's safe. And that might be one of the reasons why we can see that little Honda Civic just kind of scoot its way away from these uh, heavy cruisers. Uh, right here's a big intersection. Somebody didn't hear the sirens, but that big rig did. Uh, that suspect slowing down again. We're making our way into Santa Fe Springs, so we're getting out of that Orange County area, making our way back into uh, LA County. Uh, but, you know, something else, Marla, that we're looking at right there hmm. is, you know, we don't see any more LAPD officers showing up. We don't see uh, anything like that. And it seems like, you know, LAPD is like, okay, this is your assignment. Stop that vehicle. We're going to give you two, four, six black and whites. You know, make it happen. Hmm. And, and that's all they have down there. And uh, right now, <clears throat> it's basically just to follow this vehicle. Hopefully he does something that might disable that car, maybe hit a curve, lose a tire, something like that. <clears throat> Hopefully nobody gets hurt, but it continues on. LAPD doing what they can just to bring this to an end. Yes, and uh, if you compare it to when we started, the erratic driving that we were seeing beforehand, I mean, sure, obviously. Uh, we're still going to Fullerton, right? Uh, the driver has been driving uh, more reasonably, let's just say that, than earlier, uh, early on in this pursuit, which is good news. And it's also good news that these streets aren't crowded with vehicles this Friday afternoon, as now we're nearing the two o'clock hour. Uh, but nonetheless, a very dangerous pursuit suspect, a carjacking suspect out of South LA, uh, armed, mind you, uh, el eluded a, a spike strip effort, and then also two pit maneuvers where those officers actually made contact with that Honda Civic, but to no avail. And here we go again. We've seen this sort of weaving in and out of intersections, deciding on where to turn or where not to turn based on traffic volume and sticking with the Alondra Boulevard now in the Santa Fe Springs area. Uh, the most intense moment of this pursuit, okay. I would say, was right before the standoff on the 5 Freeway in Buena Park when this suspect was driving at speeds of 60 miles per hour plus the wrong way on the 5 freeway. So heading north in the southbound lanes, uh, several near misses uh, that lasted for several miles. And fortunately, we can report that no one was hurt. There may have been one accident as a result of that, but it was uh, Stu saw that and said reported back that it was just a minor collision between some two innocent drivers. So we hope that they are physically OK uh, as we continue to watch this carjacking suspect uh, in Norwalk now taking Alondra all the way into Norwalk, speeds about 50 miles per hour. Uh, the protocol is if you're going to do a pit maneuver, a pursuit intervention technique, that's what that stands for, it needs to be below 35 miles per hour ideally. So although we're seeing this yeah, officer yeah, pick up speeds, nope. maybe he's going to nope. try it, nope. even though it's nope. above that 35 mile per hour threshold, Stu. Yeah.
Yeah, and it, it's just created a turn right there, making a northbound turn there on Bloomfield. Uh, you know, we're, like you said, we're in the Norwalk area. This is clearly the Sheriff's Department's uh, uh, area. Here we go again, getting up really close, getting up really close, and it, it didn't happen once again. Put him on the wrong side of the road, though. Uh, it, 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 every time he does that, it just makes it more and more dangerous. I'm just putting it out there. We're going to stay here. Uh, we've been doing the math back and forth, back to Fullerton for fuel. Uh, we're going to stay as long as we can, but it is getting pretty close to that moment where we're going to have to say we have to go. And believe you me, I am more than uh, than 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 wanting to stay. Uh, I always want to see these things come to an end. I want to see the the conclusion. But right now, you know, safety for the the helicopter and the crew is is paramount as well. Right now, though, there you go, officer throwing out a spike strip. No, oh, I don't know if he got it. It was close. It did, uh, Vinny's saying it did hit the back tire. Unclear if it actually took out that tire, but it bounced off of it for sure. What a valiant effort. That guy's definitely getting a gold star when he gets back to the uh, back to the station this afternoon. Uh, right now, though, that vehicle kind of running on its own uh, with no the, none of these officers right behind it because of that spike strip deployment and the fact that he made that little crazy U-turn. Uh, but right now, making his way back onto, uh, onto Al Alondra. Yeah, back onto Alondra. That's where he was on earlier on. Now, now we've seen it in the past, those spike strips don't blow that tire out. The air is going to come out very, very slowly if mm -hmm. it was effective. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep an eye on it. That might actually slow that car down even more, and that might make it make the uh, pit maneuver with the vehicle more uh, more pliable. That might happen. Right now, though, I can tell you Angie's doing math. She's got the abacus out and flipping beads and trying to figure out how long it's going to be to get back to the airport. She wants to keep us here as long as possible. But again, uh, safety is definitely on our list as well. Sure. But uh, that uh, they're making another hard U-turn right there. But it doesn't look like uh, that rear tire is going to be going flat. Yeah, so and uh, so at any rate, but it w what a valiant effort that uh, officer just out there saw, saw the opportunity, mm -hmm. seized it, and threw that, uh, threw that spike strip best he could, hit the vehicle, but uh, maybe it was laying on, the spike strips were laying on their sides. At any rate, that uh, car continues to go, LAPD continues to chase it, Norwalk area, and uh, it's, you know, like we said, it's more than just a theft. This guy, this person took that vehicle by force from the owner. That makes that suspect a little bit more dangerous, but uh, robber t a type of robbery. And uh, but you can see that the <coughs> LAPD gaining on him once again. Looks like another wrong side of the road deal. Uh, you know, every time he does that, makes it much more dangerous for the public. Makes it a little bit more tense for us up here. But uh, Vinny's kind of kind of calming my nerves, as it would be, showing me that look, there isn't that much ahead of him right there, and everybody's kind of getting over to the side of the road. There is a semi, so there is that. And uh, you can see that LAPD helicopter calling it out down there. The LAPD cruisers, they're going to stay on the right side of the road. And uh, hopefully this vehicle doesn't collide with anything as he runs another red light and continues to stay on the wrong side of the road out here. Watch. Okay, so we have so. this. Uh, Ooh. Here we go again, right? Against yeah. traffic, wrong side of the road, Alondra Boulevard. This is the Santa Fe Springs area. Speeds in the 40s. Yes. Oh, my goodness, another near miss. That's a, that's a plus. And uh, yeah, a couple of near misses. That When I said that's a plus right there is we're actually making our way back towards the airport where we're going to have to get fuel. So it's going to let us stay here just a little bit longer. But okay. you can see right there this car. Look, look how tight it is. And then somebody making a turn. <gasps> somebody else making a U-turn. There oh. you go. Oh, oh, you saw him. I don't know if that was on purpose or he was just trying to get out of his way. But it did look like he tried to back up to block that guy in. So, you know, the, the public kind of done with this, you know, as well as probably a lot of these viewers. I know LAPD, they, these guys, oh, these guys really, they are trained, they are trained professionals, but you know they just want to bring this thing to an end. They want to get this guy into custody. Uh, right now, though, that suspect just has been taking so many chances. Hopefully, uh, those chances are going to, you know, stay on, on his side with luck and nobody gets hurt. Yes, uh, that, uh, of course, is always the hope, uh, and that's why we cover these pursuits to keep everybody in these neighborhoods safe when we have a reckless driver on the road. And this pursuit suspect has been on the road now for almost 90 minutes from South L.A. to now Cerritos. This is Car Carmenita Road. Uh, this is all thanks to our extreme nav technology, which puts us where this is. Uh, more than what now we're seeing two spike strip attempts. 
uh, two pit maneuver attempts as well. The pursuit continues, a carjacking right. suspect uh, at another intersection in a Honda Civic four-door silver tinted windows. We know this person is uh, said to be armed. This is according to officials, an armed carjacking suspect, uh, extremely dangerous by the fact that A, they're armed, and then B, how erratic that they've been driving for the last 90 minutes. Uh, now in Orange County, uh, that's where it started, of course, in L.A. County, and now back to the Downey Norwalk area. Definitely. I don't know how many tires okay. they got. Seven of them off your right side. And uh, we'll see what happens here, if we can see those tires go down. So back over the wash. Let's hope they're not run flat tires. They look low profile, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I they was do. just going to say, those they definitely look, look like low profile, profile tires, which could pop pretty easy. I've often wondered what the, uh, on the low profiles, when they, when they have the uh, run flat tires, how they're affected by spikes. I don't think, I, I think they're tougher for some reason, their yeah. resistance. All right, so uh, our reporter, uh, Chip Yost, uh, is in the area and is on the ground. Chip, uh, where are you right now? Uh, I am right now on uh, La Palma and Redford Lane. We're right in front of Steve Luther Elementary. Um, they just passed me. If you see, kind of, it's the backwards. He's coming back oh, your direction, back. Chip. Are there. He's coming back. He just did a U-turn. Oh, actually, it looks, it, looks like they're, yeah, it looks like they're coming right now. Hold on. Hold on. It looks. Other way. So just to understand here, Chip is, yeah. are you in your vehicle? Oh, just, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get the camera rolled around. It's a slow rolling camera, so here we go, here we go. Um, all right, so, so they just passed here. We're in front of Steve Luther Elementary here. You mm -hmm. see the pursuit going that way. And I just saw, as uh, before the camera got rolled around there, you may have seen it from Sky 5, the, <clears throat> they threw a spike strip out. Oh, wait, I'm going to let this officer go around me here. And did he drive well, around that spike around strip, here. Chip? I, I couldn't tell because uh, I could not tell from my angle because mm -hmm. I'm trying to navigate. They've got, I've got cars behind me I'm trying to get in front of now uh, to get back up there. But yeah, I just all I saw them was uh, throw a spike strip out. I did not see if his car hit it. Uh, so right now we're on La Palma heading, uh, heading west. Uh, I'm, well, in he's La Palma, he is, uh, uh, heading west towards the wash where he just was, and it looks like they're right there. Yeah, um, he's come to a stop. Like they're stopping kind of right there over the wash. On his own here, he stopped yeah. right by the wash. So maybe yeah, the spike strip just, worked. Just, uh, that's kind of right there on the, the Orange County, L.A. County border right there. That is uh, that wash right there. Um, if you're familiar with the area, there's Bloomfield is uh, just to the west of it right there. So it's Bloomfield, uh, La Palma, La Palma becomes Del Amo right there uh, in this part of town. And I see a lot of people running out, uh, and you guys might have a shot from the air of what's going on. Uh, I'm coming up behind it right now. It looks like some people are getting out to try to run over and get their own pictures. But I'll try to pull over here and see if we can see anything. Uh, but it looks like everything's come to a stop here, uh, right on La Bama, where literally, this is like literally the, the Orange County, LA County line right here. Uh, so up there, you see some folks uh, running up there to see what's going on. Looks like some of them are getting back in their car. So I don't know if that means uh, he, is he taking off again? He's on the move. Yeah, again. he's yeah. on the move again, but uh, not fast. He's he okay. kind of stopped, and then now he's literally like two miles an hour, just kind of poking okay. along there. If that's a proper word. Yes, he's. Well, maybe the spike strip worked this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike, so does it look like there's some tire damage that you can see from Sky 5? On that driver's side, it looks a little tilted. Yeah. I don't hear, I can't hear him now. Yeah, Mark, we're losing audio with Mike. All right, how about now, guys? Yep. Yeah, that's better. There you are. So, well, this is interesting. Now he's got a. No, that was like a mile away. Now he's got a, a, a vehicle blocking him. Right. And uh, who is this guy? You know? Yeah. So, he, unless he makes oh. a right turn onto the grass, uh, he's stuck. But as so, soon as I say that. Kai's saying that that car, that guy pulled up, put his truck there, got out of his vehicle, and walked away. So, sort of helping to pin him in, but. 
he's not in the vehicle. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's well. That would, you know, that's one case where it might be helpful. <laughs> you know, you're not driving to block the guy. You just have a using your car as a barricade. So there he is, up on the right side. Well, he's managed to get around it. Make sure twelve o'clock seven. And now he needs to move the pickup truck as he's impeding the LAPD from following this guy. That tire's Mike, is, it, is there damage to the tire? Wait, well, you know, uh, boy, it looks pretty low on the left front. That's the only one I can really see clearly. Let's see what happens here. Uh, yeah, it's time to take this guy out. Sorry. Uh, enough crazy driving here in Orange County. Let's see what happens here. Uh, they've got good coverage as far as anybody in front of them in case anything would happen. That's why they got out of the car so fast is mm -hmm. uh, they're good on the west side. So he's facing westbound. So looking further west, um, they don't have any crossfire situations. Uh, they're going to block. So they block the intersection west of us. There won't be any cars coming at them. Uh, this is the time to take this guy into custody and see what happens. Again, a stolen car. armed or we pretty pretty or pretty confident it's only one person in the car so they're on the PA each of these black and whites has a public address system on the roof I'm sure everybody's heard them and they're just telling him to got you there they're uh, tell him to drop the keys out of the car expose his hands and then open the car and, and it's basically your felony stop what they used to call a felony stop I don't know if they still still do but he's definitely a felon and he's escaping or trying to so uh, we'll see what happens here uh, whether he's even able to hear the cops we're up pretty high we've got a bunch of helicopters up here but we're all you know 1500 feet above him and Mike what is on the other side we see the vehicles behind him what's in front of him that's where we were saying that uh, that intersection had oh. been blocked off a little bit further west, so mm -hmm. they don't have a, they're not going to have any oncoming uh, traffic except for that one little side street there in the residential. See where they yeah. blocked the traffic there? Mm -hmm. Let's see if they still. So this one guy's coming. This one black and white's coming towards the the terminate or not termination, but the end of the pursuit. And there he is, moving slow, a uh, little bit of speed. I really wonder what's going on with those tires. Apparent. It's a little bit of tread, uh, Rich is telling me. So uh, three spike strips, three successful ones. It makes Shout it difficult to, to drive the tires. car, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The returning uh, yeah, radius. Gets, right, even tougher for uh, pits and all that other stuff if he doesn't have the normal driving. So is that a driver's side? No, the word driver's side is still closed. So there's something flashing in the, is that just uh, I think it's the reflection. lights in the back of him? Okay, thank you. So Chip, this is your view on the right-hand side of our screen. You're right behind all of this. Yeah. Yes, and uh, just uh, kind of right the next turn where they're at right now. If you turn right, right past that, that's a Target department store. Uh, so they're right next to a Target here. Okay. Uh, they're now on the Cerritos side. Uh, we're back a distance here, so I'm zoomed in. Um, but they, they were kind of blocked by the tree here. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of reposition here a little bit, see if we can, uh, let me zoom out so it doesn't uh, mess up the picture there. But yeah, we're back a little bit of distance here. I'm gonna to try to pull down off the curb here. So it might be a little bumpy. Well, very bumpy, <laughs> but here we go. So I'm gonna. To... Yeah. He's still in the vehicle. Um, obviously, you can see LAPD uh, behind him, and how Mike said, you know, they're they're speaking to him on a loudspeaker, basically saying to to show his keys and follow their directions, probably to get out of the car and get on the ground. Yeah, this is always the um, yeah. really the most dangerous part of pursuit when it comes to an end because you don't know if he has a gun or any kind other type of weapon and. You're just kind of a, a, a waiting game up to a point, hoping that they'll finally throw the keys out and get out of the, co the car and, you know, lay down on the ground face down. But uh, you get to this point and sometimes 
we could be waiting another hour yeah. for this to come to an end. This is coming up on 90 minutes uh, of this pursuit, uh, but he there is damage uh, apparently to the, the tires, and so it's impeded his ability to um, drive at, at any particular higher speed. And so he's, um, but with that said, we've also seen him stop like this too for a little while. But again, it's going to be hard for him to turn right and left. So hopefully he'll get out of the vehicle soon. You hear that uh, from Chips yeah. microphone? You could hear all that helicopter. That wasn't us. That's the C that's the uh, LAPD Air 18 that's doing low orbits. Uh, the rest of us are way up here. Oh, oh, he's yeah. taking okay, off. He's on, on the move again. All right, take him out. Having it's a hard to. time steering, you can tell. Let's go. All right. Okay. Oh, come uh, on. All right, we're going to no, get him. Oh, they didn't huh? get him. Wow. Okay, now he's headed towards Bloomfield. Bloomfield's a north south. That's a southbound turn. Now he's going to be boxed in. Got him. So before he had a way, uh, he had a place to go. Uh, the road was completely clear in front of him, but here he's got LAPD behind him, and now you can see that other vehicle. Um, blocking the road so it doesn't mean that he won't try because we have seen him yeah. do hit vehicles and <clears throat> back into things u-turns three-point turns uh that car is pretty beaten up now you know it's something just occurred when you hear them talking about the adrenaline of the officers in pursuit mm -hmm. and how that may or may not affect how and when and where they take him into custody and force and all that kind of stuff at this stage in the pursuit there's no more adrenaline they the adrenaline is gone because they've already chased this guy he stopped it's been going on for such a long time everybody's pretty cool calm and collected i have to tell you that from the primary to the backup everybody's pretty cool about this so uh, uh, we're going to see what happens here where this guy takes off again let's pull back just a little bit rich see what's in front of him okay so he's got a black and white in front of him he can get around that if he wanted and uh, Chip, we can see you down there, seven and below you, 16. Yeah. Chip, what's it like and, around uh, on the surface streets? Uh, are, are there a lot of looky-loos out or are people being cool and kind of staying out of the way? Uh, well, there is, but if you see uh, right now on Bloomfield, the northbound lanes where this guy is, he's in the northbound lanes, who's going the wrong direction, it looks like. Uh, all those folks are trying to back up and get out of there, and I understand yeah. why, because you got cops with their guns drawn, uh, kind of pointed uh, to the direction of where the car is. They don't want to get in any of that crossfire. What was that? Uh, so crossfire. they are, uh, they're trying, we saw one guy even go across the median in a pickup truck to get out of there. And it looks like one of these SUVs might try that as well. But right now they're just reversing down the road uh, to get out of the way of this because you don't want to be in the crossfire of anything like this. No. Um, other than that, and we just heard something. I don't know if that was a uh, less bag. lethal. Um, or yeah, it sounded like it might have been a less lethal beanbag or something. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, but I, I can't tell for sure. But yeah, something's been fired, it sounds like. Um, and they're trying to clear out uh, the sheriff's deputies. There's a little strip mall right here with like a pizza hut, uh, subway, that kind of thing. They're trying to clear people out of that strip mall where this is right next to, uh, you know, so they don't get in any danger. Um, you know, where we're, where we're standing, we're directly behind these uh, kind of these officers. I can't, I don't have a direct view of the car, of the suspect, uh, because the way they've got them boxed in. Uh, but they've, I don't see how he gets out of this. Uh, they've got him completely surrounding, surrounded from what I can tell. And, uh, and it's just a matter of time, I would say, at this point. And Mike, you talked about those bean bags, non-lethal bean bags, earlier while we were following the pursuit and the reasoning behind that. Can you explain that again? Well, if they just wanted to uh, take these windows out, let's say the guy wasn't complying, and uh, they just wanted to take the rear window out, uh, they could do that. And Eric is starting to move. Uh, so they could at least see what's oh, going on. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, on one of these, a couple of weeks ago, a guy had uh, refused to get down. out of his car, okay? Which, is that the Wait, right Wait, is side? that him yeah, there that yeah. you have, Chip? Yeah, he's talking That's to him now. Yes. 
Whoa. All right, I'm going to get on the other side of it. We're going to get on the driver's side here. Uh, he's being belligerent. You can tell by his body language. OK, hey, I'm going to hang up the phone. Okay, so this is a pursuit that, uh, of a stolen car, a gray Honda, that uh, again started in Norwalk, and it looks like it finally may be coming to an end on Bloomfield Avenue in Lakewood. Uh, he's been through several jurisdictions and uh, down in Orange County, uh, in the Disneyland area, you know, Buena Park, Anaheim, Fullerton, among others. And uh, now you see the LAPD is, is right on top of him. Uh, the chop, the show, shot that Chip Yost gave us just a moment ago from the ground level. After he turned toward the curb, he rolled the window down, and he is talking to officers, being argumentative. Yes. But uh, at this Where? point, it looks like he has nowhere yeah. to go because there is a oh, black okay. and white I'll unit there up in here. front of him down the street a little bit there, a couple of, you know, about 20 or 30 feet. So this is pretty much over, it looks like. We just... It's a matter of getting him out of the vehicle at this Plus point. Plus the angle that he's uh, positioned here, yeah. especially with the damaged tires, there's no like turning here no. and, and going. Um, there's just simply nowhere to go. But uh, that was pretty amazing um, that Chip was able to get that shot uh, yeah. for us up close where we could see the suspect. It looks like a, so now this, one of the vehicles, they're getting super close to him on the back end, basically boxing him in so there's no yeah. movement. Yeah. Well, here's, uh, how about this? What would turn this into a barricaded suspect situation? Any, any ideas? Because we've got a couple. Uh, LAPD, and we, the reason we're bringing this up because it's involved in the city of Los Angeles, they have the SWAT team. And you need one of three elements for a barricaded suspect. He has to have committed a crime, he has to believe to have been armed, or is armed, and he won't show himself, he won't get out. Now, whether that's a house, a garage, a trash can, a car, this could easily turn into a barricaded situation, a barricaded mm -hmm. suspect where they would call out the SWAT team. That's, uh, you know, they're going to try to talk him out first, but that's what they need to call them out. And they could very well do it if this guy refuses to get out. Can they do, uh, would the SWAT team be the one who would put like a smoke bomb in there? Yes. Is that not these guys? Okay. Yep. Uh, no, you're, Frank, you're right. I think they would. Unless they carry, along with those beanbags, they do carry uh, gas, but I think that would be a SWAT call out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a SWAT decision after they've surrounded the area, taken the high ground. Rich pointing out that rear left window has been blown out. So that looks like, uh, you know, uh, a little beanbag operation there. So whether they're going to launch some gas in there, I don't know if they have the capability of doing that. It may, may if this turns into a barricade, then, then uh, SWAT would probably handle that. Well, you know, law enforcement, uh, including LAPD here, trained for this uh, at the academy. They train uh, throughout the years uh, th for incidents like this. Um, but every situation, you can't really train for a specific situation because they're all breaking and new and different. different. So uh, obviously they're making a lot of decisions on the fly here. Uh, they've done a great job of uh, pinning him in officially here. Now it's just uh, getting him to comply okay. with them and to get out of that vehicle so they can get him handcuffed and, and off the road. Well, and usually you don't like to see a black and white unit in front of the vehicle. Mm -mm. But when he turned on that this street, that was in fact the case. But now the fact that he's turned his car toward the curb, you know, there's no officers directly in front of them putting them in danger. But now they've moved that black and white unit. Uh, directly behind him, so he's he's trapped. I mean, yeah. he he would have to jump the curb. That would and there's a hedge there, as you see. So he is completely trapped at this point. He has no place to go. So at this point, it's just a waiting game until uh, the SWAT team arrives, if it comes to that. But hopefully, he'll give up here sometime in the next couple of minutes. And of course, a lot of emotions uh, on both sides. Uh, you know, this we don't know if this guy is impaired in any capacity or if he's uh, got some some mental issues going on, but an hour and 90 minutes or a 90 minute uh, pursuit, uh, that's a lot of adrenaline and, yeah. and he has to be tired um, and in some capacity of, uh, you know, being chased and then the officers have been uh, on him as well for 90 minutes too. So this is now more of a just sit and wait situation.
uh, those negotiations uh, hopefully starting and they have direct contact. I mean, they're going to be able to see each other eye to eye here because it's very close. You know, Glenn, uh, you were mentioning the position of the car uh, with respect to that uh, parking area of a strip mall. That's some concealment, that little brush area. Not mm -hmm. cover, certainly, but certainly some concealment, which is good for folks there. But we saw a couple of people running from that uh, parking area. So uh, I don't know where they're going to try to clear that out or evacuate that area. If this turns into a barricade, then, of course, they'll, they'll evacuate that whole strip mall area. But uh, so a little bit of concealment, not too much cover. The guys are, the officers are using uh, those black and whites, which also don't provide much cover. Bullets go right through those. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just have to see what happens here. So again, the waiting game continues. This is a pursuit that uh, started about 12:45 in the Newton Division of the LAPD. Uh, hopefully, coming to an end here in Lakewood. It certainly looks that way because. The way this driver is pinned in, there is no place to go. Uh, we have seen this pursuit uh, on the 5 freeway where we actually saw him take an exit at Lincoln Avenue and then literally hop back across a median go onto on the 5 side? freeway, do a U-turn, uh, yeah. heading northbound I, on the southbound like side. I'd like to see that. And driver. we've seen several U-turns on surface streets, you know, a lot of towns in the Disney area okay, I'll down go in Orange yourself. County and uh, now we're back up here in LA County and we are in the city of Lakewood and the standoff continues. We've also seen spike strips being thrown out um, at least twice that we saw. I think a third one likely was thrown as well that ultimately damaged this car. Um, he was able to avoid uh, that second one uh, and then backed into one of these cruisers <clears throat> and then took off again. But I think the most dangerous situation was when, you know, we had been on this for about 15 minutes when he, Glenn, that you mentioned there, did that uh, U-turn and yeah. then was going in the opposite direction okay, in the fine. fast lane uh, against traffic. It was just incredibly dangerous. And then uh, literally tried to do a U-turn with traffic going 50 and 60 miles an hour, not even just cars and pickup trucks, but large 18 wheelers coming straight towards him. Yeah, uh, he eventually did a three point turn and sort of awkwardly tried to get in the right direction and then was face to face with officers. He's been really face to face with uh, LAPD several times. Um, and then you think that he's going to be stopped at that point and then he just takes off again. So yeah. it's been a lot of cat and mouse. Yeah, just there we saw the where he got off on Lincoln Avenue and then hopped back on the five and then did the U-turn, which yeah, he had a signal so. problem. But here he is heading the opposite direction, Ugh. the wrong way on the five freeway, uh, uh, heading northbound on the southbound side. LAPD Just ridiculous. We, uh, that, I mean, people were camera. very lucky. He was very lucky and everyone uh, passing him because there were some really close calls there. Um, luckily, he came to a stop or at some point uh, it really wasn't up to him. He basically came up on some construction and could not keep going um, and so sort of had to stop and kind of got pinned in there. Um, but that was uh, just terrifying to watch that you just especially live. Uh, you just never know what's going to happen and the danger of that is just incredible. But like Mike mentioned, there's so much that he has so many laws that he has broken. Uh, during this pursuit of 90 minutes uh, there on the side of your on the right hand side of your screen. This is just a little earlier, like 10 minutes ago. Chip Yost, our reporter down on the ground, uh, was able to get this uh, shot of the driver. You can see he's super agitated there and in the LAPD with Quiet. the rifle right on him. But just talking back with an attitude. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and he just put it fully it. down. Very, very brazen, very brave. Huh? Um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say brave. Just yeah, brave, wrong. Stupid. You got but a, brazen. You got a, you got a barrel of a rifle in your face, and you're yeah. yelling at officers like that. Not wise. Not wise. I mean, clearly well, something that, might uh, be going on. Some mental problems, maybe. Um, he doesn't. He didn't seem impaired in terms of like drugs or alcohol, because he's actually just been maneuvering that vehicle. Um, all over the place, but uh, this is definitely aggressive behavior that we see here earlier. Now, as of right now, we don't know what the situation is. He's there on your left hand side. Those are the live images uh, where he is barricaded there still in his vehicle. But look how close they are to him. Do what? No, they're right on top of him. Okay. Yeah. And 
I'm sure. Bloomfield and Del Amo is the location in Lakewood, which is why Lakewood sheriffs are also assisting LAPD. So uh, Bloomfield and Del Amo, for folks in the area, you're going to hear the helicopters, that's for sure. So you want to stay away from that intersection. It's basically blocked off. And Lakewood sheriffs, along with LAPD, we may have some CHP down here, but uh, you can see lots of black and whites. He's not going anywhere. If he gets out of the car, uh, they'll find him. And uh, let's hope it doesn't go any further. It's almost, it, he, we're not sure where he's from. Uh, this was a stolen vehicle, but he literally did. I mean, if we counted them up, probably a dozen U-turns back and forth, especially once he got on these surface streets. Yeah. Oh, now he's trying to move. Yeah. He just tried to move forward, Mike. Uh, so there it's, he's got one, does he have one tire up on the curb? Yep. <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, I think they're not gonna let him go anywhere. Let's hope anyway. So the only, the only real crossfire situation is that one black and white on the very left part of the screen who's blocking traffic, that's mm -hmm. the northbound side. Okay, so sheriffs are in the parking lot and they're making that safe for everybody who may have been in one of these stores or the Pizza Hut, whatever's down there. And uh, now it's the waiting game. Now he may be hung up on that sidewalk now. He may not be able to go anywhere. With those uh, low profiles, that Glenn, uh, absolutely right. He may not be able to move, that's for sure. Now, Chip, where are you at? at this point? Uh, so right now, let me roll the window because the helicopters are probably pretty loud here. Um, right now, they had me move. I was, like, if you're looking right there, I was right behind all those officers because mm -hmm. that's where we were following the pursuit, but it just came to an uh, abrupt stop again right there. Uh, they had me move because they were afraid it was in the line of fire, so I backed up uh, over to kind of where I'm at now. So this right here is the intersection of Bloomfield and Del Amo. Yeah. Where the suspect is, he's on the, the Lakewood side. This is the not only the Orange County, LA County border, but on this side we're out here, this is the Cerritos Lakewood border. So uh, to the south is Lakewood, but over here you see there's a big Target Above department store. A lot of people have come out to try to see oh, what's wow. going on, um, obviously with the intersection and everything closed. Uh, they've widened the perimeter uh, because of that uh, fear of a possible crossfire if anything happens. Uh, they've widened the perimeter, they put up police tape around uh, this kind of the strip mall and some of these areas around here uh, to keep people out of the immediate area. Uh, but it's just the whole intersection completely shut down over here. Um, and right now, because of where they've had me move to, I don't have a direct site like we did a little bit ago on that driver. As you said, when we did get a, a direct sight, it did not uh, you know, appear obviously from his actions driving as well, but from his uh, uh, actions when we saw his face, it did not appear like he wanted to comply at all with what they wanted him to do. Uh, so how long this, this takes, don't know. I know. I'm gonna move north a little bit. And I'll, and I'll zoom in here. If you still got me, that this we area do. right here, this is gonna, yeah. This is right behind where, where they're at right now. So they had me move back up uh, because they didn't want me being, I was kind of just right where we're pointing the camera right now is where I was parked earlier. Uh, so they had me move from there, but you can see, you know, officers have their guns drawn. There's, there's a, and let me try to reduce some of that shakiness there a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do something here. So yeah, you I'm see the officers there, they've got their guns drawn. Um, uh, you know, aimed at his car presumably, uh, but at this point he's not complying but uh the, we did hear if I'm you're with us just probably about what 10 minutes ago we did hear what sounded like probably some less lethal i don't know if we caught that from the uh from the chopper or not it sounded to me like they might have shot some bean bags at the car mm -hmm. uh, but i couldn't tell for sure it said there were some loud pops when we were parked in that area right behind the car uh, but yeah, that's that's the situation here. So that that strip mall there and they're in where these offices are you're looking at in, the, in my picture right now. That's a strip mall, like I said, with a Pizza Hut, a Subway, a dentist office uh, and, a, and a couple other shops um, that they've cleared that area out because of the, the fear of any kind of crossfire. And if we go back, I'll back up a little bit here, show you kind of the crowd over at the uh, the Target department store here on the Cerritos side. You can see a bunch of folks just kind of coming oh, wow. over. Uh, there is a school in the area. Uh, not, not. Uh, it's. I don't think it's in any reason. Any yeah, reason where they would have him. to be worried. But there is uh, uh, Tetzloff 
junior high, which is right about a block behind where I'm parked right now. So they do have that school nearby, but but nothing super close. I think that would uh, that would affect any of the schools around here. But you see some of those folks, a couple. Uh, I think they're also clearing out that shopping center, the subway and salon area that you were talking about, Chip. Um, some of the officers are in there moving people out of there, I think. It's a little too close for comfort, yeah, probably. That's the, that, yeah, that's this area here where we just saw those officers yes. with the, the guns drawn right here. So that's, yeah, that's the kind of right behind the background there. You can probably see, I think it's the entrance to subway in the background. Um, and then and then you can see the the kind of the deputy or the officers, I'm sorry, or deputies, I can't tell from this angle, just uh, trained on the car over there. Yeah, um, they have to so, yeah, because they don't know what kind of move he's going to make. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then there, here, I guess you what's going on over here. I see something. It looks like they're just shooing more people away from the shopping center like you were talking about over here, uh, trying to get people. Oh, yeah, that family I think we saw crossing the street might have been trying to make it to the subway. Uh, but they're uh, I've got you, asking them to kind of get out of the area. So yeah, so just uh, basically just just uh, kind of a hurry up and wait right now to mm -hmm. see what this guy does, and hopefully he, he gives himself up at some point. So didn't we recently have a standoff like this that uh, the pursuit lasted and then overnight and it lasted for like nine? He stayed in the car for like nine hours and then finally gave up at like four in the morning or something. Oh, so. one, one moment. Oh. Yeah, it can take forever. Oh. <laughs> We're thinking about three zero minutes on station. All right, we continue to uh, to watch, which is basically just a good old fashioned standoff at this point. Uh, the driver of this stolen gray Honda at this point has no place he can go. This is all taking place in uh, Lakewood on Bloomfield Avenue. Uh, it started the stolen vehicle in the Newton Division just south of downtown Los Angeles. Uh, the pursuit went into Orange County. Uh, some uh, obviously some crazy moments uh, with this guy driving on the five freeway, exiting, doing, hopping back on the five and doing a U-turn uh, on the southbound side and heading north. Uh, we've seen a lot of U-turns on surface streets, and he finally made a wrong turn here in Lakewood, where there was a you see the black and white unit off to the side there at the top of your screen on the left uh, upper corner. He really had no place to go and came to a stop and then he turned toward the sidewalk where he is now and then eventually tried to drive up on the sidewalk and uh, that black and white unit in the parking lot pulled up really quick so he's completely trapped at this point. Uh, uh, we did see the shot there. from Chip Yost where he rolled the window down and was pretty belligerent. Uh, it looks like the bean bags have uh, broken through the passenger side window on the driver side of the car. Uh, and we would assume at this point that there's probably a SWAT team on the way because there's only so much that this group of officers can do under, you know, guidelines and regulations. So uh, probably a SWAT team is going to come in unless he'll just get out of the car and give up, which yeah. doesn't look like he wants to do at this point. LAPD was successful. <clears throat> and uh oh, is he moving again? He just tried to back up. Tried to back up. He is just not giving up. He is determined. Problem is, where's he going to go? Yeah, there is no place for him to go. No place. Well, the pro the LAPD was really successful in dropping those spike strips, so the yeah. the car is damaged. Uh, the the tires are are damaged, so which affects uh, the steering as well. Uh, but we've seen him here, as Glenn was saying, being belligerent and you know speaking within uh, yeah. you know ten feet of these officers, but still not getting out of the vehicle, yeah. moving forward up on the curb. Now he's trying to reverse. So he is super agitated at this point, looks like. Yeah, OK. Mike, did you see where he just tried to back up? I did. You know, yeah. come on, take a clue. It's time to go yeah. to jail. It's time to get out of the car and give mm -hmm. yourself up. This is, this is not going to go good. He's going to jail. It's all there is to. He's not going to get away. Uh, if, they turn, if they call the SWAT team because they determined that he's a barricaded suspect, which I don't think they have yet, uh, but then it's a whole different ballgame because then they're here for, you know, for however long it takes. And that's a whole different negotiation process. But, you know, we've seen some folks in the store. I don't think they've cleared out this uh, strip mall area uh, or whether they've taken people out of the store. I don't believe they have. They've got that one black and white there. If this became a shooting situation or they determined, hey, it's a now time to call this a barricade, then, of course, they would they would. Uh, 
uh, evacuate everybody safely out of that southwest, southeast corner here of Delamo and uh, Bloomfield in Lakewood. Of course, uh, Lakewood Sheriffs and LAPD from Newton Division, uh, LAPD initiated the pursuit and ended up here uh, back and forth, as you were mentioning, Lou and uh, Glenn, on these freeways, wrong way, just uh, driving crazy. So uh, whether they've made that determination, I haven't heard it yet, but uh, that could be forthcoming if for some reason, they would be determined. Or they would determine that he was armed. They haven't made that decision yet. They haven't determined, or at least they haven't told us yet. It's fascinating why these pursuits happened in the first place. Like what his thought process was. You know, was this? We haven't heard carjacking. We heard stolen car. Um, you know, did he have a plan? Was he just headed somewhere, um, or was he just bored and trying to get attention? Um, seemed super agitated when we saw him uh, fussing back and forth with the officers. We don't know if he has uh, past uh, law enforcement, um, past charges Authorized against him. Um, so that would be interesting as well. Sometimes uh, these guys have, and women, uh, have warrants out for their arrest, and some are just uh, first timers out uh, doing the, driving the pursuit. Today was very dangerous, though, uh, watching this for. Uh, Gosh, we're coming up now, um, almost coming up on two hours, shy of two hours on this. Uh, I'm just glad he stopped because it was very dangerous for a bit. Well, as you mentioned, if there's a warrant out for his arrest for something else or maybe he's a repeat offender, uh, a lot of times they'll have the attitude they've got nothing to lose, yes. so they'll just drag this out as long as possible, hoping yeah. that they can pull off some kind of miraculous escape. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say the odds of that in this case, not going to happen. Uh, Glenn and Lou, you know, that's why uh, we were talking about earlier, finding out who the owner is. If the, dri if the person driving this car knew the owner, if the, if the owner knows uh, the circumstances surrounding this, whether it was a family dispute, some type of uh, domestic deal. Uh, sometimes, you know, we've seen, in fact, a, a pursuit that ended just uh, right around this area. A guy, they, they took him into custody on the freeway, and he was acting erratic and crazy like this guy was. It was a family dispute. He had a mm -hmm. husband. It was a husband and wife dispute, which uh, I don't know if that accounts for all the emotion or the adrenaline of the chase, but uh, that's really important. And I'm sure they've made some type of follow-up with the owner to find out if the particulars of this was it just a random stolen, was it a joyride like you mentioned, Lou, and uh, Glenn, or, or you know the circumstances surrounding the stolen. That's a huge, uh, huge part of this. What uh, causes them to ultimately call SWAT? So uh, basically three elements need to be uh, met. Uh, the first one is he won't come out or she won't come out. The second one is a crime has been committed. And that actually could be either a misdemeanor or a felony, any type of crime. The third thing is he's believed or she is believed to be armed. Mm. We haven't heard whether this person is believed to be armed. I think we would have heard it by now. So this may not be a call out uh, if those three elements have not been met. Mm -hmm. Two of them are met, yeah. but not the third one. Yeah, two He's of them for the sure, enemy, the first two. You see him? How tall are you, Elda? Okay, he's a 13. And then Chip, you're still in the same position, right? I'm sorry, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say, Lou? Are you still in the same position where you were when we called you a few minutes ago? No, no they, they, had, they had me move again, so right oh. now I'm in the uh, Target parking lot. Oh, so you have uh, a different, you're um, in a different angle now. Yeah. yeah, so we have a different angle. So here, I'll widen out to give you kind of a, another view of where, so oh, where we're okay. at. So today I've crossed the street. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, I was showing you that Target parking lot a little earlier. Yep. yep. That's where I'm at now. So um, we're trying to zero in on, on, you know, I think we're kind of blocked as to where the car is from here yep. uh, as well. But you can still see all the police position and the deputy's position kind of around, uh, you know, in a way that I don't see. Even I, I heard you guys saying he kept trying to move, but I don't know how where he's going to go. Yeah, they <laughs> pinned him uh, a little bit he's more. He's completely surrounded. Yeah. yeah. I think if you, pin him, yeah, if you pan you over to the, your left a little bit, I think you might be able to pick up the vehicle a little bit more. 
Chip, what are people oh, saying around there? there. I, I, we saw some looky loos from the Target uh, w where you are. Um, but what oh, are they saying? Oh yeah, you see, actually, you see some actually you see some people on the sidewalk coming know, down the other so way. I know that's so dangerous. Oh, just, um, yeah, I mean, I mean they didn't. Uh, Kind of, they're probably going to get stopped, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of them were coming up asking me like how many people were in the car. They were just curious, you know, who's in the car, what's going on, um, and you know, they're just like the rest of us watching this play out, trying to figure out uh, how this is going to end. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, that's you told me to you're telling me to go to the left there. Did you guys see anything? Uh, you want me to well, zoom in on Well, you can see the front of the angle? car. The angle you have right there is great because you can see the the front of the car there. Um, is that? So it's hard to see. Yeah, that looks like. No, I don't know. If, is that it? Or? Yeah. No, I think that's police loop. No. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't tell from my angle to be honest. Um, so, but yeah, basically okay, the police vehicle see. you have Oops. you had in a shot was basically the one that's in front of the vehicle. So right here. Mm -hmm. So, is that the one you think? No, pan to the left a little bit. Uh, and I see. A, is the door open to to the uh, suspects? No. Car? No. Or is that a patrol car? Oh, maybe that's the patrol car's yeah. door. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So right now it's, it's it's hurry up and wait, but you've got a kind of a growing crowd and then a big traffic jam too, because right now this uh, this is a thoroughfare, uh, uh, a main road to get there. As I was telling, there's no schools like you know directly in harm's way here, but you know a block in one direction, uh, down the street in another direction. This is a way people go to pick up their kids at school, and this is right about the time. Uh, you know, those kids are getting out of school, so parents coming to pick up their kids are going to get a little surprise coming through this area. It must be so loud out there with all the helicopters, too. Uh, yeah, there is there there are s several up in the up in the air, uh, which is another uh, question. Uh, some of the folks are coming up and asking me like who all is up there, and I was explaining, uh, oh, it's us, it's the police, it's a. Uh, I imagine uh, you, you know everyone who can help. But here, I'll show you. There are oh, actually, actually a lot of people back up. out there you can see with some you. Of the crowd out here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll back up a little bit more. You can see this is uh, kind of right next to the truck. This is the corner over here. And like I said, this is the Target parking lot. Oh, wow. And uh, just a lot of people gathering. If you go back here, too, there's a <laughs> the parking lot's a little jammed because uh, they, yeah, like, you see, like cars have been having trouble getting through the parking yeah. lot in here as well. That's but, the uh, last thing I would want to do if I were at the Target to go and watch that. I would be terrified of getting in a, being caught in the crossfire or something. So interesting. Oh.